Greg Duncan of the Fisk Planetarium at the University of Colorado Boulder. Welcome to Explorations, the series that takes a look into NASA's diverse projects and the people who make them happen. most important resource for life on Earth. Without water, all the life we know of would be impossible. When fresh water runs low, the health of plants, animals, and humans is at risk. But the problem goes deeper than that. When fresh water on the surface of the Earth runs low, we can see it. We also depend on underground aquifers for much of our water. There are 16 million wells in the United States pumping up underground fresh water. Almost half of Americans get their drinking water from wells. California alone pumps 11 billion gallons every day. That's 300 gallons per person every single day. Not just in California, but also throughout much of the United States, underground water is getting used up. In some places, this has already caused the land to sink. This happens because it takes much longer for surface water to filter down and replenish the underground aquifers than it does for us to pump the water out. Farmers need water to produce our food, so it's critical to know how much water is available. Because it's hidden underground, how can we measure how much is there? NASA researchers have come up with a solution using gravity. Because wet ground contains more mass than dry ground, just like a wet sponge is heavier than a dry one, the gravitational pull is stronger or weaker depending on how much water is soaked into the ground. High above Earth's surface, NASA's two GRACE satellites, nicknamed Tom and Jerry, followed each other in an endless chase. They orbited 100 miles apart and precisely monitored each other's positions with the accuracy of the width of a human hair. Due to the pull of gravity, each satellite speeds up as it approaches wetter ground and slows down after it's passed. Recording the changes in the distances between the two satellites, NASA researchers can map out how much water is above and below the Earth's surface. The GRACE satellites have helped us discover underground droughts in many places in the U.S. We need to monitor and plan underground water usage as carefully as we do surface water. In the Arctic, huge stores of fresh water are locked away in the ice caps. Other NASA satellites have discovered that the polar ice is shrinking but the GRACE satellites found that it's also getting much thinner, something we otherwise couldn't see. An important part of NASA's mission is to use the vantage point of space to increase our understanding of our home planet, improve lives, and safeguard our future. Jenny Bonin, one of the many scientists using GRACE data in her research, is located in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hey there. I'm Jenny Bonin, and I'm a research scientist here at the University of South Florida. You're standing in the College of Marine Science, which is where I work, and most of the work I do here uh, involves GRACE. I've had the opportunity to work on a whole bunch of different areas in GRACE. Uh, I've worked on hydrology, which is how the water changes over the land. I've worked on oceanography, uh, comparing models of the pressure at the very bottom of the ocean compared to what we see with GRACE. And right now I'm actually working on something called the cryosphere, which is the distribution of mass change in Antarctica and in Greenland, specifically how ice is melting uh, in what areas and at what times. And uh, you might say to yourself, these things don't have anything in common, they're totally different. And you'd be right. And to me this is one of the best parts about working on GRACE and working on science in general. Uh, you don't end up doing the same thing all the time. Everything is kind of new. Um, I guess to me this is really important because I, I didn't get into science because I was specifically interested in one thing. I was interested in everything. Uh, as a little kid, I was enthusiastic to be on the math team. I was one of those kids who, in third grade Girl Scouts, I had all of my constellations memorized. 
And yes, if you'd sat me down and asked me, why is the sky blue? I would have been happy to answer in as much detail as you could possibly have imagined. And to me, this was fascinating. Uh, I didn't really care that people called me a nerd. They were right, but it also didn't matter. Because to me, what was really most interesting is trying to figure out how does the world work? And that's still true. And that's why science is such a good spot for me. Because you see, if there's anything that you're interested in, any one topic, there's almost certain to be a place in science for you somewhere. So if you're somebody who's curious about part of the world or part of why the world works, maybe you should take a look into science. It's been a lot of fun for me. Maybe I'll see you there someday. On behalf of NASA and Fisk Planetarium at the University of Colorado Boulder, thank you for joining us for this episode of Explorations.